Okay. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. Um, it's week one, and uh, yeah, I'm very excited to have you all here back and uh, see your demos uh, and what you have worked uh, during this week. Um, so today's agenda looks like this. We will have uh, your demos presented by you, by pairs. Um, and um, next, we will, um, we will have learning module about um, um, cold reviews, um, following with uh, the discussion of issues um, for the upcoming weeks, uh, upcoming week, like the coming week uh, from now. Um, so, um, one quick thing, Muhammad's back. Did you get a chance to like introduce yourself to the group? I can't remember if you guys had an individual hmm. call. I don't think so. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. So, Muhammad here, and uh, I'm your mentor, and I have been unavailable, sort of, like for the first week. Sorry for that. <laughs> but uh, yes, here I am. And uh, um, next week onwards, I would be much more available because I would be going back to traveling back to Finland. So there, there would be less problems and everything, but, uh, yes. And maybe today as well, like now, or when I'm giving my presentation, so the power could go off and I would be gone. So <laughs> no worries. If that happens, we will pick up and carry on for you. No big deal. Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. Of course. Uh, sorry, uh, I've seen that it's also a bit struggling with audio. Uh, maybe we should wait for him. Yeah, go for I think you are cutting off a little bit. Uh, um, no big uh, deal. If you're yeah, having trouble with audio too, we can pick up for anything that you were carrying on with as well. We totally got this. Okay. Yeah, I think jo Joseph is having. Uh, oh, Joseph. Okay, he says it's okay now. Great. Cool. Well, we will get by doing our best. Okay. Um, yeah. Why don't we get started with uh, the demos? Uh, so today we have uh, Joseph and Julia um, and Becky um, and Chamaka. Um, yeah, you are more than more than free to choose uh, who wants to go first. Um, and. Yeah, as, as we discussed, you can kind of share your screen and uh, show us your functionality in the browser and then maybe walk us through the code that you wrote. And, um, and then we will move from there to the next pair. <clears throat> we may be able to start with uh, the, fir the first issue we had, which can, so that we can maybe go in chronological order, if that's okay with everyone. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, okay, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, here, I guess I will start then. <laughs> sure. Joseph, please help me out if I say something wrong. <laughs> um, I try to explain, of course, I had help from tutorials and so, so I'm not sure if I can explain everything I did, but share my screen. Is it? Yeah. Um, where do I start with the app? This is our app. <laughs> this is what Joseph and I did that we can enter the name of an item and the quantity and add it to the list. And it's not only in the app, but also in the Firebase Cloud Store. Um, we started by making, um, we have two files where first we downloaded or we yeah we did the firebase and the react um firebase hook we downloaded it from the npm website and to have the dependencies in the i can't remember anymore something like here um and yeah and we use them 
in our two files, which we made at items to list. This is when, yeah, when you write an item inside the, the form and uh, this, when, when this is happening and the other file is when the item is in the list already and you see the, the list itself with the stored data. Sh should I start like this? I, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's 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 great. It's awesome. Um, I, I just wanted to ask if you could demonstrate uh, kind of submitting an item to the Firestore, and then yeah. maybe showing us um, uh, it appear in the Firestore. Okay, and then let's do this first. Um, you can write something in here. What don't we have? A right banana and one piece of a banana. And now it shows up from here. So it's in the app. And let's take a look at Firebase. Is this even fine? Ah, yeah, here. And, now, and in the Firestore cloud, we have it in here. Awesome. And you can also. Um, add someone in here. So let's say, yeah, am I right? No, sorry. Um, oh. Oh, yeah. Let's say it's the item. It's a string value, and yeah, we take an elephant. And the other field is how much. And it's a number, and let's say one. I hope it's item. We have it now in our field, and I hope in the React app. Yeah, and it's here in the app. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> this is great. Great job. Hey, hey. Okay. Awesome. Um, should we explain more about this thing, or? Yeah, sure. Okay, I'll try. Um, <laughs> where do I start? Really... Uh, Julia, can I help? Yeah, please. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, okay, let to... me share my screen. Let me share my screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay. One more. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, one of the requirements for this uh, pairing is to install Firebase as a dependency. And then secondly, to also install the Firebase. So we can also install the two dependencies from NPM. But for those of you who may not know, among the participants is can install by using this command NPM install Firebase. You can also do the same React Firebase box. What does need to install the name of the dependency? So after installing the dependency, you need to initialize. Uh, you need to create an instance of uh, the fire base, which has been done for us already inside the lib library. Now this. Configuration details so in order to initialize it, we have to first of all import Firebase from Firebase app. And then after install after importing Firebase, 
there's a map called Firebase Initialize App. Uh, that method takes the configuration details as well. Um, then we exported this so that we could be imported inside our component. Now, there are two components for adding items, then the other one is for displaying the items. Now, in this component where we add the items, um, we imported fire from the lead directory. Now, this item items to this component, uh, we are using new state. Uh, this new state is uh, for updating state when we add item to the store. Sorry, I can't hear you, Joseph. Can everybody else hear Joseph? Cutting out a little bit for me. Yeah, it's a little patchy, but I can understand for the most part. Joseph, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. It's patchy for sure. Um, Joseph, we can't hear you very well, so we'll just okay. move on to questions on this one or demos. And if there's other thoughts that you want to share, I would totally recommend doing like a video, like a Loom video or something to sort of um, summarize what you want and share it in Slack if you want. I'll also write this message in the chat in case you can't hear me. Awesome. Um, um, okay, so um, I had one question. Uh, if, if Julia can share, um, I, I could uh, ask one quick question. It's okay, you can ask. Um, um, so I think it was about, um, um, uh, let me pull up the code because. Should I share the screen or? Um, yeah, I think it was about a snapshot listen options uh, for the hooks, Firebase hooks. Um, and um, yeah, I, I think we also, um kind of went through the uh documentation for the react uh, um, i mean firebase hooks um and um so did uh, did you find if, if it was necessary to have the code over uh, for the loading queries Um, yeah, it, it's okay. We can, I think we can uh, discuss this uh, later in the chat. Good idea. Yeah, if you guys um, have questions or whatever, let's post them in Slack so that we'll continue to have access to them and we can discuss them there. But next group's demo, if you're ready. Okay, so I was going to uh, just quickly go over the functionality and then Chimaka's um, going to share the code. Let me just share my screen. Um, there we go. Can you all see? Yep. Yeah, perfect. Um, so our issue was to... Um, have links at the bottom of the screen that were present and persistent, one for the list view, one for the add an item view, um, and the URL updating when those are clicked and also displaying in bold, um, depending on which view we were in. Um, so let me just uh, brush this. Um, so 
Uh, this bottom part from shopping list onwards is um, and the part that Joseph and Julia were working on. Um, so we've kind of kept that throughout the app at the moment until we sort of separate that out into the correct places. Um, but at the moment, we've got our list and our add item links at the bottom. Um, so when you click add item, the heading change, which was our component, um, displays in bold and also the URL updates um, to the correct view as well. Um, so that was the functionality. I think, Chimaka, do you want to share the code if I should stop mine? Okay, okay, Becky. Okay, so um, we started by by uh, downloading React Router DOM for the routing, and then we created a new um, a new components. We use the React Router DOM here. Then we created a new component. The nav, we created a different uh, component for the nav differently because it's going to be on every page. So someone can easily add it on every page. It's going to uh, be persisted on the on every page, on every page of the project. So we created two, okay, no, this is ours. Two uh, components, add item and list. Yeah, so we're not really showing anything, um, anything serious inside the components. We are just uh, displaying this head uh, H1, just to make sure that when we visit each of the components, that something is displayed in the component. And this is it here. And this one. So that's pretty much it. Uh, we are at door, we are using switch. These are the two components, and then the nav. This is the nav here. Okay, is that okay? What else do I do? It's great. Yeah, that was great. All right. Is there any yeah. questions or anything uh, you don't understand? Uh, yeah, just a comment. Uh, I like that you used the nav link uh, because then you you had the, like access to active class names, uh, so that you can kind of fold the uh, links. So yeah. yeah, that was very clever. I loved it. Okay. Instead of just using link um, that comes with the yeah, router. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Really great work, everyone. Okay, and so I've said this in the chat, but I just wanna clarify. If you think that you'll have internet troubles going forward during demos and stuff, that's totally fine. Weird internet things happen. Um, but if you have certain pieces of the demo that you are in charge of, feel totally free to pre-record those on something like Loom, and we can watch those together and ask questions about them on the call. If like how Joseph's um, screens and stuff freaks up when VS Code comes into play. Um, that way we can all just um, have a super experience. But great job. And I know that it can be weird to deal with technical difficulties like that. So just know that it's totally okay. And we're all in this together. All right, thank you. Yeah, great work. Great work, everyone. Really, um, yeah, this week was really, really, well done everything we we merged everything and um every issue was closed and everybody was ready to go and demo I've been paying super close attention did you all have to deal with some weird merge conflicts or anything yeah, there were some git issues but not uh, merge issues but what i loved about everybody is that they were very resilient and they didn't give up you know they ran into trouble they asked for help uh, we collaborated all together and uh, we overcame everything amazing work everybody that's incredible the first week can be really hard to get into the groove of and it sounds like you did an amazing job proud of you okay
I'm done, I swear. <laughs> I would gush on you for hours if you would let me, but I won't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely difficult, especially I was really impressed with everyone because yeah, Git can be really uh, intimidating when, you, when you're first dealing with it. And it seems like uh, if we, it, it seems like if we do something, it'll like erase everything and it'll be a little bit scary, but usually there's the, like, there's barely anything horrible can go wrong unless you're really actively using a, a command that's like specifically explicitly for, um, erasing everything. So I, I was really impressed with like everyone really jumping in and not really, uh, getting too nervous about, or not not like being too afraid of the, the different commands and really like wanting to learn about what, what could be used. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great work, everyone. Um, Good job. Yeah. Um, I think we can um, turn it over to Mohammed for a learning module about code reviews. Let's do it. I'll share my screen. <clears throat> Would you mind sending the link to the slides in um, the chat real quick? I'll have it pulled up so that if your internet goes out, I'll volunteer to just take sure. over. Sure. So all right. Do you see my screen? Looks great. Yes, yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so code reviews. Mm. I would say it's like a very basic, like a, an, a very important part of this, the whole software like uh, deployment. So after the development and like uh, testing and everything. So the code reviews also plays a very important part as probably you, uh, we, we already have seen like in the first week, which is like a good thing uh, that how important are code reviews. And then there is this interaction uh, between developers and there, then there are testers also involved and uh, so there is this whole team that gets involved during the code review and then uh, everyone gets to learn from it. So it's, it's a very important thing. So there are like, basically there are six things uh, that we would be covering uh, during this presentation. So what is a code review? The code review cycle. Uh, what makes a code review a great code review? How can I help other review my code? How can I review other people's code, which is as important? and then exploring the code in GitHub because GitHub is like a certain tool, which is a very famous and the most important or the most used uh, tool. Uh, and then there is Bitbucket as well. And then there is GitLab, but uh, uh, we would be focusing on GitHub. And then there are certain things in GitHub uh, that a person needs to know to uh, do a successful or a good code review. It helps a lot. So what is a code review? It's a conversation about a set of changes. So you make changes, you are doing development, you are making changes, and then you decide that, okay, uh, there would be a pull request out of it because eventually it needs to get uh, merged to the master branch or the main branch. Uh, and then it goes to production because that's the main thing that we all want. So there, there is this, before it gets merged to the uh, main branch or goes to production, then there's this part of it that, okay, it needs to be uh, code review uh, because other developers also need to see it and then they would uh, share their opinion about the code that you have written so it's one of the best spaces to share knowledge and learn from others absolutely like it's it's it's, it's a good place to interact and learn uh, about the changes or the technology or like how things could be same things could be done in a different way um, and that sort of thing so it's a collaboration space where you share your work ask questions so don't hesitate to ask question as well. It's not about only like expressing your opinion about certain piece of code that, uh, but you could also ask like, how is it working? Or I don't understand uh, because there's a good chance that that particular question would lead to uh, like improvement in the code. So don't hesitate to ask questions as well. It helps you improve, improve as developer. And then it helps your team like decentralize knowledge because if certain person is doing like uh, writing the code, and if it's like a huge piece of code, there are like many commits to that pull request. 
uh, and if other persons are uh, other people who are doing the code review they are not like uh, uh, seeing it like in a in a certain way or not like seeing it uh, in like uh, what's the word for it uh, like doing the code review in depth uh, not doing the code review in depth then the knowledge remains to the person uh, who who has written the code so it ne it needs to be like you have to be active when you are doing code review um, and then there is a shared responsibility. So it's not only the responsibility, like there could be like certain teams or organization and that sort of thing. Like the person who is writing the code, he is responsible once it goes to production and everything. And then the CTO and everyone could like blame you or something, but that's not like a good practice. So it's like a shared responsibility. So the person who is writing the code, the person who is doing the code review, the person who is doing the testing, the scrum master and everyone is in involved in getting the application to production. So it's a shared responsibility. And then it improves the code base quality because if you are writing the code, then sometime it can happen that you are just focusing on getting it delivered as fast as possible. And then you are not thinking about like the best practices uh, of writing a code. And then you are just skipping it uh, because you are not focused uh, on like uh, on, on the best practices because of the pressure which you could have so the other person would get this opportunity because he would be, be he would be bringing like different perspective on doing the code review so it eventually like improves the code base quality the code review cycle as we also noticed in the first week which was great that you open a pull request uh, you receive feedback you make changes then it goes back to the feedback again then again there could be some questions or some comments or further improvements and eventually, like once once this loop like finishes, then the the code gets merged uh, to the main branch. So, what makes a code review a great code review? Don't focus on stylistic changes. So, there are these linting and prettier and that sort of changes. There are tools for that. So, we we don't need to worry about it. These are like pre-commit hooks, and there are things for that. So, once the commit is done, uh, it would make sure that it would some of the some of the linting and prettier issues would be solved by itself based on uh, the linting configuration or the prettier configuration. But then there are some things that it would tell you as well that, okay, the commit was not successful and then you have to make the changes. So code review is not the place for uh, mentioning about uh, making these sort of changes. And then trying out the feature locally and then in the test environment as well. Uh, so this is very important, like trying out the feature locally because uh, there is a good chance that, okay, if you pull the changes to your local machine and then you run, and then you could see that, okay, there are certain instructions that needs to be uh, followed to do, uh, to run uh, the, the application now. And then you could tell the developer to, for example, update the readme or put the comments or something. So this is very important uh, to try out the feature locally. And then you have to also see that, will you understand this code in a month from now? So, because it's not only about now, because this, uh, seeing that particular piece of code could be like 100 lines, but then seeing the bigger picture, the application grows, and then there are like 5,000 lines, 10,000 lines, 50,000 lines, the whole application is like huge. And then if you see that, okay, if this code gets merged, and then after a month, in the application, it would be very hard to understand. So maybe it's a good time to discuss with someone or like rethink about how uh, you, you are approaching the problem. So that's also very important. And then absolutely praising, like it gives you so much confidence and it helps a lot. So don't be shy. And this is what I have learned from Colab Lab as well. So praise to them and us and everyone. <laughs> and the default is approval. So you don't have to say that, okay, I approve of the changes or anything. So you could say like, if there are any small changes that you need to make, so you could say like, for example, that uh, the developer could make that, make that changes and then they are good to merge. So they don't need to like uh, uh, review, uh, open, open the review again. So they could merge after making that small change. Be kind and empathic. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but yeah, you know what I mean. So as in other walks of life, it's important here as well. <laughs> so you help other understand your changes. Let's see the next section for that. 
try to answer all the questions and take your time absolutely take your time that's very important so running running the code it gives you confidence because you might be overlooking something you could run the code you could make some even make some changes in the code and then see how the application behaves it breaks or some styling breaks or something like uh, the api call breaks or something so you would have more uh, like more knowledge about the code and more understanding uh, helps you find things that you would not from just a skim and don't be tempted to skip it like there could also be that okay you are understanding the code and you would uh, you would say that okay i could skip it but maybe there is a good chance that uh, once you run the code there is something that you are overlooking uh, pull request can include instructions on how to run the code depending on the team so if there are like certain certain like steps that are changed like for example there is this environment variable uh, then you need to tell like we, we also have this uh, like the api keys and the user ids and those sort of things are like uh, like the configuration things uh, there is a good chance that uh, they are in the environment variable and the environment variable file is not like shared so every developer has their own like dot n files and that sort of thing you would uh, as you grow uh, in your developer career you will see that but it is something similar to what we also have for the firestore that there are keys and that sort of thing so if you are running the code then there is a good chance that you could ask the ask the person who has uh, who has uh, written the code to ask for all these like what are the environment variables and then to remind him because once this thing goes to production then in production you have to like make sure that there are these api keys and everything that are in the production so because this is something that could be forgotten easily uh if you are not sure how ask questions great learning opportunity don't be shy just ask questions how can i help other review my code so this is like when you are you are writing the code and you want uh, once other developers or your other teammates they want to review your pull request and then you want to make it as easy as possible for them so add a meaningful pr description which is very important because it helps a lot it gives you a good start when you are starting to review the code if possible write meaningful comment commit message i think so yeah this is also very important so just we cannot just like write like it's it's a fix or uh yeah i fixed it or something so it has to be meaningful uh self review your code explain why you did it what you did it ask questions even if you are the one creating the pr so it's good to like revise or go through the changes that you have made yourself it will give you this sort of like uh, because there is a good chance that you would be coming with some other perspective so you would be coming with other angle and with that way you would be able to uh, maybe like have some other improvements included as well and then use screen capturing tools so there are, there are these tools because if you have an image that makes it a lot easier to understand uh, sometimes uh, instead of like uh, reading through the text so yeah so this is like the github view which we already have seen so uh, on the top uh, right hand side there is this uh, uh, number of lines so it, this like 799 and minus 10 it basically shows you that uh, there are 799 uh, additions to the file and 10 like deductions to the file and then there are these file files changed so there are threes or there could be one or that could be tens so it gives you this sort of like understanding that okay now the thing that once you scroll down the things that you would be exploring would be this much and then for navigation you can go through like previous and next and then there are these uh, drop down boxes which uh, which are like filters and then you could select uh, based on commits and it's a good idea to like especially if uh, if the pull request is huge so you are working on a big task then you you need to divide your pull request into different commits like into small steps as possible because then these are like logical steps and then the person who is like code reviewing it go through these each steps each step and understand that okay first this is done adding the environment variable like the configuration thing and then there is the the second thing that uh, using it and then like making making it available to the service and that sort of thing so it's 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 a very sequential thing to read for the code reviewer and once it once everything gets committed to the main branch then maybe somebody else like needs to go through this after 6 months 
So again, it's not intimidating because there are steps to it. Uh, yeah, this is also like helpful. So once you have explored the code, you have seen it, then you can mark your review uh, file as viewed. So yeah, the best part, share your thoughts. So what has been your experience in the past, in the past with the code reviews? How did it feel to do code reviews this week? Mm -hmm. This would be interesting. How is it? How has it felt over the last week or in your previous experience to have your code reviewed? And then there are further readings. I have shared the presentation uh, in the Zoom chat. So yeah, please go through it. And if you have any questions, comments, please do ask. So how was it? How was code review this week? Was it something you all had done before or is it new for you? I've done a little bit, but not that much. Um, I guess, yeah, I don't know. I suppose with the with the database, when we were reviewing the database pull request, it was more, um, which is why it was useful to hear Mohammed about asking questions, just asking questions about what's happening rather than just feeling like you need to be looking for sort of things to actually review, if that makes sense. Um, because I think it was more about just understanding what what they'd done um, for me at least. Um, and then there were like, like a few tiny things that I mentioned as well. Um, yeah, but I think I think um, Joseph um, and Julia reviewed ours and it was really useful to just sort of see what they'd picked up on and then with mentors as well. Um, yeah, it was good to get all the different opinions. Um, so yeah, I think it was really useful. I had a quick question about commenting um, in the code, just along the lines of understanding the code as we went through. Um, is that something, so we weren't doing that in our code this week, but is that something we should be doing it or is that something that happens in practice where you'd see sort of comments throughout the code of just describing what's happening um, or, or would that be too much work? Oh, depends, oh go ahead, Mohammed. It, it depends from team to team. Uh, there are pros for it and then there are cons for it. Like for example, one con for it is because when you are writing the code, then you also have to remember to rewrite the commit, uh, rewrite these comments as well. And these are like, most of the times th those are like overlooked. And then there are two separate like branches, like the code is doing something else and the comment is saying something else. So I personally would uh, like, like say, or the thing I would, uh, I prefer is that the code should be self-explanatory. Like if, if there is a need for writing a comment, then it, it means that the code should be uh, somehow made like more simple. Like if there is a huge method, then you have to take something out of that method and like create a new method out of it. Or if it's a very huge class, uh, then you have to create another class out of it or maybe by like uh, renaming the variables. So that could also be like uh, explanatory, uh, renaming the variables and the functions. Yeah, that's that's my opinion. I totally agree with that. Like try and make your code as self-explanatory as you can with like good variable names and just like really easy to understand code so that it's like sometimes the longer, less complex versions better than like a one liner that does everything just so it's really readable. But um, kind of like Mohammed was saying, it, it totally matters team to team. Comments in code, surprisingly and ridiculously so, can be very controversial for some reason. Like some people hate them and are like, don't put that garbage in there. But I'm like, as long as your comments focus on what the code or like why the code is there and not exactly what it does. So you want to be like, this is why we had to create this method. Um, because that kind of thing, if you put why it does that, regardless of what the like ticky tacky business of that function does, you know, like Muhammad was saying, like, if you update the code, the comments might not match. But if you focus your comments on like why that code is in place, the code can update as much as it wants. And probably that comment is still going to be relevant to why it's there. Um, if you're going to have like a really lengthy comment that seems like, you know, like you're explaining a whole process or something, try and remove that out to something like Notion or Coda or your README, wherever you're keeping your documentation and just link to it from a comment. But I think, um, I think comments are great in code. I think it helps your teammates read your code better. I think it helps future you read your code better. Cause there's a lot of times like Mohammed was saying, like you'll go back six months from now and be like, 
what was happening here? Like, why did I need to put this function here? And if you just leave a quick comment, that can be something that's really helpful. So um, I think really kind of like ask your team about it, ask them why they feel certain ways about it. Um, but a collab lab, like leave the comments. This is your tool. So it's like, when you go into job interviews and stuff, you're gonna wanna be able to like review this code and explain it. And if you have those comments in place, explaining it will be so much easier. Okay, right, yeah, no, that makes, that makes a lot of sense, thank you. So, EDLR, leave comments if you want to, that's fine. What was that, Joseph? Yes, that is me. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, Muhammad. I, I, I want to know at what point. Sorry, sorry, I, I can I cannot hear you. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Uh, if, if, if you have a question, uh, you could write on chat and I could answer you. Oh, okay. While we wait for Joseph's question to come in, does anybody else have thoughts or like, did you enjoy Twitter view? Was it challenging? Was it easy for you? So Joseph's question, how frequently should I commit? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so basically when, when you are working on something and you think that, okay, this is one logical thing that you have done. And then the, the second task would be something else. Like, okay, it is related because it's part of this whole issue. But then you think that, okay, I have done this. Like I have configured the router. So, okay, I should commit it now because the main, like I have made the changes to the app.js, I have configured the router. So this is one thing uh, logically easy to understand. So you would commit. And then the next commit would be like, for example, in the routing, you, you are working on this uh, add items and then you start working on add items. So that would be like the next commit. And then once that is done, uh, then you would say like, okay, now I have to list the items. So that's like a separate thing. So that would be like the third commit. Does it, does it answer your question? Like I, I gave, I gave an example, but uh, this is how it should be. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add that uh, commits, if possible, shouldn't be like 1,000 lines long because then it's very difficult to understand them. Uh, so Mohammed, I agree with Mohammed that you should uh, make small commits, but on the other hand, not make really tiny ones, like uh, don't split logic in 10 parts. Uh, yes. So there needs to be a balance. Yeah, I love that um, Muhammad was saying like, it's just a small chunk of work that leads up to your bigger piece of work. So like you add React Router and implement it, you commit it. You create the navigation bar, you commit it. Like a chunk of work that you're like, that part is done, on to the next thing. That looks nice. I mean, unless your house is on fire, so then you uh, commit quickly and run away. <laughs> And if you do that, which is fine, like sometimes I'll be right in the middle of something, but want to make sure I commit my work, you can commit it. And then you can always go back and squash your commits together. So if I like half do a piece of work and I'm like, I need to commit this because my kids are being crazy and I don't want to lose it. So you'll commit it. And then later on I finish it, then I can squash those two commits together. So it just looks like one commit. I think I have an article on that I can share. Before we like in this presentation part, I wanna point out that like code reviews for me were one of the hardest things about being an early career engineer because it felt like really weird to look at a piece of code by a senior engineer that I was like, I honestly have no idea what this piece of code does at all. And so my process for that was to go through line by line and really try and understand what the code does and just ask questions. So like, if I see something I don't understand, it's perfectly okay to be like, can you tell me more about what this line of code does? And by them, it's like responding to you and explaining it, they learn and you learn, which sometimes can lead to you having more feedback about that thing. 
it's also stuff that you'll remember forever. So it's like five months down the line, you see somebody else implement similar code and you can be like, oh, have you considered this? Because it's something that you learned when you had originally asked. So if you're looking at a PR and you don't know what to do with it, just try and read through each line and talk to yourself through what it might be doing. If you don't understand something, just ask. Um, I, I also love the, the part uh, where you can kind of, Mohammed mentioned this, that you can leave some comments to yourself when you are creating your PR. Uh, so you can kind of select multiple lines of the code that you are not exactly sure. And you can kind of leave a comment that, okay, this is how I implemented this future, but uh, I'm not sure if this is the best practice. So can you give me a feedback? Uh, that's also um, absolutely um, something that you can do and uh, you can be open, open doing about it. Anything else on this? If not, we can see what's up for next week. Good. If you do have questions about code review, post them in the cohort level channel because I think code reviews are something that are very new to people when they come to Collab Lab. And so we're all kind of learning it together. So post your questions out there and we'll discuss them. Alex, you can you can share your screen if you want uh, to pull up the issues if yeah, that's easier for you. Sounds good. Let's do it. Um, share my screen. Okay, so can everyone see my screen? Let me know if you can't. Okay, great. So um, here we are in our uh, in our GitHub repo for our uh, uh, cohort nineteen. And um, so we have these two issues coming up for next week. I'm gonna go over them one by one and then um, we're gonna, wait, let me just make sure. Oh, um, and then we're just going to kind of go over what the acceptance criteria is and like, I'll, we'll show you a couple of wireframes that you can get an idea of what, of what we need to be looking at. Um, so here's our, our first issue of this week. It's as a user, I want to set up a new shopping list so that I can start tracking purchased items. And if any of this, oh, okay. I, I keep getting distracted by the chat. So I'm not gonna check the chat. If anyone has anything, feel free to interrupt me. I, I won't take it personally. <laughs> um, okay, so for this issue, uh, when we're looking at our app, um, a shopping list, basically, it's going to contain their set of items that we add to it. And all of these items are going to be associated with the specific user's token so that it'll know that this is for this specific person. And so here, when we're creating a new list, so a new list of groceries for a certain user, it's going to have the following. So it's first going to generate a new unique token. Um, then after that, it's going to save the token to local storage in the browser. And then after that, it's going to show the user the list view. So on the app, so that the user can see uh, the, the list being set up. And then um, when here, the following script should be used to generate a suitable token. We have this in the code itself. So if you just go to the, um, the repo, the code, and you go to um, the lib folder. And just as you used Firebase, uh, the Firebase um, uh, file here, uh, you have it here as well uh, in tokens. Um, and then the acceptance criteria for this is for users who don't, do not already have a token or a list, a button or link exists on the home screen that allows you to create a new list. So just a button that has create list. I can pull up a little wireframe of that. One second. Um, let me get this in here. So essentially this is what the welcome screen, I'm not sure if everyone has seen these yet, but you can also find these in the GitHub, in the code um, under wireframes, resources, wireframes, I think it is. Um, but this is, basically going to be what the welcome screen of the app looks like. We don't have to worry right now about all of the uh, 
the details shown here. We just need to worry about this create a new list and then the functions that will follow um, that uh, clicking of the button. And so, yeah, continuing on with that, clicking that button and or link will generate a new token and save it to local storage. Here's that process again. Once the token has been created and saved, the user is redirected to the list view. So we'll transfer over to the list on the, on the UI. And then lastly, for users who do not already have a token saved in local storage, they should be shown or redirected to the list view. And um, one second. Okay, yeah, again, that's just all gonna come from the create list button on that, uh, like here we have right here. And if this seems like a lot for now, don't worry. Um, I don't, I don't think we expect you to just like immediately know what you're going to do just from hearing this explanation. It's going to take a little bit of like digging into the code and planning out exactly what you need to do to maybe figure out the kinds of questions that you'll have. So once that comes up, you can definitely pop questions into our Slack channel and we'll, we'll help you out as, as you go. And so, um, that's number, that's our first issue for this week. Does anyone have any questions before I move on to number four? Am I moving too quickly? Anything? One, one thing I just want to add to this and to all issues is try to stick as closely to the acceptance criteria as possible. Like, because if not, you might start doing work that's actually set up for future weeks. So on this one, like follow those acceptance criteria very closely and only do that. So you'll only be doing that button, generating a token, sending it to local storage and rendering a list. Like that's it. But yeah, I like to, I love how you mentioned like this probably seems like a lot and you're not going to know exactly what to do, but just make sure you're keeping really good notes on where you're at in the process, either on this issue or on PR or in Slack, somewhere where we can kind of follow along in case you need help. We can dig in with you. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that reminds me. I just a tiny digression. I, uh, this last week was my first week at my new job. And just like in any sort of like project that I was doing or like set it, setting something up, just documenting exactly what I did just to know where I was or if I got lost to know the exact steps that I had taken to get it to a certain position really helped me. So if that's something that you're interested in doing, I highly recommend just kind of documenting the steps you take as you go through. Uh, noting the questions that you have too, because sometimes we'll think of a question and then later not remember it. And anyway, love that. Um, okay, so going to issue number four, which is our second issue of this week. Um, as a user, I want to add a new item to my shopping list so I can start recording purchases. And so in this, um, again, each shopping list item, so whatever you add to it, consists of the following data points, the name of the item, so like banana or elephant, as we saw before, um, how soon you're likely to buy it again, so the frequency, and we'll have th these three options soon in the next seven days, kind of soon in the next 14 days, two weeks, and not soon, so in the next 30 days. And then lastly, uh, the last purchase date will be another um, data point of, of each particular item. And so uh, the acceptance criteria for this particular issue is that the user is presented with a form that allows them to enter the name of the item and then select how soon they anticipate needing to buy it again. So those three options up here, um, when, the, when the user submits the form, the item is saved to the database associated with the user's token. So it's gonna be saved in Firebase. Um, along with the item name and integer corresponding to the estimated number of days until next purchase is saved. So seven, 14, and 30 for each of these options. Um, the last purchase date should be set to null initially. Um, and then, uh, so for that, you can create an item without purchasing it. And then lastly, item names should be displayed as a simple unordered list on the list view after they're added. Um, let me grab a couple of 
screenshot wireframes for you here, just so that you have an idea. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so here's the first one we have. Um, so this is kind of the, the overall view of, of what this issue does. Uh, again, as Stacy said too, it's it, it'll I think it'll feel really easy to like want to do all the things uh, instead of really staying really close to the scope of this particular issue, but really try to go line by line. And it, as long as you have that like basic, okay, this works. Let like uh, just stop there rather than going on. Um, one second, I'm just reading notes here. Um, so this has, this wireframe specifically has notes regarding accessibility that, that we can think about as we're coding it. And then eventually uh, the, um, sorry, one second. And then at, eventually the, the app's gonna look something like this. Um, so I think these are kind of the same. Wait, are these, these aren't the same. Uh, these are the same, sorry. Oh, I think, I think. <laughs> yeah, the wireframes are like okay. super, like, like they're over the whole app. So there's just little bitty pieces of each wireframe, which can be kind of misleading. So like Alex was saying, stick really close to the AC on this one, just the radio button. Um, and if there's accessibility notes on the wireframe, implement those. But as long as you're using that accessibility extension um, and just running accessibility checks on it, you should get notified if you're breaking any accessibility rules. Mm. Okay, so that's it for the overview of these issues. Um, Stacy, do you have the, or is it is it the same pairs or it's different pairs this week? It'll be different pairs. Okay. I don't have them pulled up, but I can go grab them. Luca might have them. Do you have Luca? Oh. If not, I'll yeah, I do. I will. I will put it up right now. And so, um, Chiamaka said something really interesting. Uh, keeping logs is like writing down the features you've implemented as a question. And yeah, that can totally be it for me if I were working on one of these issues, like in my day job or at Collab Lab. What I would do is I would go in, and the first thing I would take notes on and write documentation for is what do I know and what don't I know? So I can see like where we're gonna fill in the gaps and start putting together a plan. Like this is what I need to do first, second, third. Then as I go in and start actually implementing that, I'd save notes to documentation that I found that's helping me apply it. I'd like write down like, I tried this, but this didn't quite work. So now I'm gonna try this other thing. So you can just kind of track through what you tried and what worked and what didn't. And there are like, I think Golfo was saying, like, if you're interviewing, this can be like really helpful too. documentation, like practicing writing good, like documentation, like you're writing when you take those notes is so vital to your entire career as a developer, because coding is such a small piece of the puzzle and documentation is going to take up a lot more of your time as a developer than you would think. So the more you can get into the habit of really like writing these things out and being articulate in that sense, the better it's going to play into your overall career. So I highly encourage you to take solid notes um, for you to read the future and for your team to read. Um, um, okay, I understand now. Well, if Thank you have you. questions or you wanna like walk through anything, just let us know and we're happy to like help guide you in that way. All right, thanks. Uh, so for the uh, coming week, we have uh, Julia and Rebecca um, and Chiamaka and Joseph. Okay, it, does anyone uh, particularly want issue number three? Um, I don't mind, but uh, if Julia, you're happy, um, we could take that one. Um, yeah, I don't mind either. <laughs> or if anyone else has a preference. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Okay, so then Becky and Julia will take issue three and then Chiamaka and Joseph, are you are you two okay with number four? Yes, yes, yes please, okay. number four. Cool, all right. And again, everyone, so I, I know that, yeah, it's a lot of information right now. And so 
anytime you have questions as you're going into the code and, and running into um, like obstacles or blockers, don't hesitate to, you guys are already really great at this, but just throwing those questions in the, in the chat, in the, in the Slack and, and, um, and we'll, we'll tackle them as they come. Uh, All right. Yeah, and I think that's it for issues. And I'll, I'll stop my share. <laughs> I forgot I was still sharing. <laughs> awesome. Any other questions, thoughts about how are you all feeling? Nervous? Excited? Um, yeah, it's good too. I think now that we've done one week, it's um, it's all kind of slotted into place for me, at least in terms of like how the week goes. So, um, yeah, excited. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, it'll all start kind of like coming together, and you'll be able to see the bigger picture just the more you go through the motion. So, great job last week, and way to hang in there. You guys are doing a brilliant job. So Absolutely. Let us know if you need anything. Yep. Write us in Slack if you have any questions, as always. We are here to help, so please reach out. OK, um, please, uh, I would like to have a, a good resource that explains Firebase. Uh, I'm still really trying to make sense of you know, Firebase um, hook and everything. Like a resource that explains the, the skills I'll need to apply to use Firebase. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I can share documentation. I think uh, Firebase has really um, like extensive and well-organized documentation. Um, but uh, in terms of Firebase uh, hooks, I think it's a, like a separate library, uh, the, the dependency that we added to the app. Uh, so I will share both documentation uh, for the whole Firebase as well as for the hooks. I love that. Can you share those in Slack? Will you pin them so we can always get to them really easy? Absolutely. Like Lucas said, I tried reading the documentation for Firebase. It is really good. It helps a lot. Yep. I think that to understand Firebase hooks, you first need to understand hooks in general to be totally sure about them and then try to learn Firebase hooks, because if you try to learn them both together, as I did, for example, uh, they were very confusing, but then I realized that I needed to understand hooks better. Uh, then once you get the hang of it, they are not so complicated. I think. Okay. There are also videos uh, uh, published by Google. So they have like uh, created like tutorials and that sort of thing about Firebase. So if, if the text could be like documentation, like if it's some, sometimes it's hard to understand and you just want to get like a general overview of the services that Firebase has, then uh, videos could as well be an option. Yep, I agree. I love that. I like learn best from videos. So like usually I'll look at documentation and like totally glaze over. But if I watch a couple of videos and then I can kind of wrap my head around high level, what's even happening, it's easier for me to doc, like dig into those documentations. So I'm all about this. Awesome. Yeah, I will definitely share all these resources um, in this Slack channel. Thanks, Luca. OK, well, amazing work. And we'll see you in Slack. Please let us know if you have questions. Be very loud about the things you're working on and the things you need help with, because we're all here to help and we're in this together. Go. Great work. Great work. Great everyone. work. Bye, Thank people. you. Great work. Awesome. Thank you very all much. Right. Good very luck much. next week. Thank we'll you. see you. Have a great Bye -bye. week, everyone. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Everyone. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.